Hey everyone, welcome to episode 7. It is the uh, late afternoon before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. And, you know, I just get, I stall on these projects when they uh, hit some, you know, road that I can't do myself, like for instance the granite. So I'm still waiting on the uh, granite guy to come out and do the template. Hopefully he'll do that next week. Um, the gas company is actually coming out to uh, hook up a generator that we had put in. We have a 400 or a 500 gallon tank and a 120 gallon tank in the ground that are bridged together. So 500 gallons total. Uh, if you're not familiar with propane tanks in the ground, you need about 20% expansion rate. And uh, while they're out here hooking up that uh, generator, I'm going to have them just plumb the gas for the uh, grill rather than do my do that myself. And Anyway, uh, you know, after taking a couple days of not working on it, it's just tough to get back into it. So I decided to go ahead and uh, start this ledger project. I've never done this before. Uh, if you saw from episode one, and I'll show you here in a minute uh, during the episode today, uh, I'll show you the inside. But basically what I did was I just went and really kind of examined the inside to figure out how they wove the corners together and then replicated that. And it's really incredibly forgiving. You could probably almost do whatever you want, and when it's all put up and together, it looks really good. Uh, but it is time consuming. You know, there's a lot of up and down, you're working from the ground up, and because there's four corners, uh, every single piece is just this, uh, you know, process of, of weaving. I learned during uh, doing this first one that, you know, you can work in a circular pattern around the column where you can just work up one side it it really doesn't matter uh, and if you want to break up the pattern uh, to make it look more random you know you just have to be mindful of that as you're doing it so I'm going to show you all that in a minute uh, but anyway in this episode we uh, get this column completely done uh, and then um, of course it's Thanksgiving so this actually took about two days and then uh and then we go to the Keys. So at the very end of the episode, I show you a little bit of uh, the flight to the Keys, which was super cool. We chartered a plane, and uh, we actually uh, did two trips because the plane only holds three people, and uh, we took six. Uh, my wife, uh, my son, his girlfriend, my daughter, and her boyfriend, and we had a really, really awesome time in the Keys. But anyway, uh, stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, so last night I was able to get three courses of this ledger up. It took two hours just to do three courses. And part of the reason was um, the amount of thought that has to go into how you want the pattern to look, which is completely random. And I'll give you an example. So right here, I have this larger stone and this larger stone. And originally I had another larger stone right here and I flipped it over to put that larger stone over here. So it looks more random. That's the first thing you need to worry about. The second thing you need to worry about is the uh, weaving on the corner. And I'm going to come back and uh, put some thin set in here. Thin set just disappears into it when you uh, wipe it clean, fortunately, because um, this doesn't have any grout in it or anything. Uh, but you can hide some of these dark lines with thin set, so I'll do that later. Uh, so you have to worry about uh, the pattern, the weave on the corners, and there's four corners, so it's it's just really time consuming. And then the last thing you need to worry about is the color. So you've got dark grays, browns, tans, and whites, and you want to make sure that you've got some of this yellowy brown, uh, you know, mixed in. You also want to pick which side is your your, the side you want to look the best, which is going to be this side, because you see it from in the house and if you're just kind of hanging out here on the patio. There's just a lot to consider. So that's why I have these laid out, so I can randomly select the colors. And then while I'm making it, I just have to be mindful of the pattern and how I'm weaving all four corners. The same is true for the cap that we're using right there. They're all different colors and you just don't want two to butt up right against each other and be different colors. Because of their length, which is very unfortunate, 
uh, I cannot get a complete one. So what I'm gonna have to do is, you know, I'll bring this one right here and, and 45 it. Then I have to worry about matching it on this side and matching it on this side, but I'll stagger these rather than having a, have the cap in the middle. What I'll do is put the cap like here on one side, maybe here on the other side, maybe here. Uh, I think that'll be visually appealing if it's staggered as you walk around it, as opposed to in the middle all the way around. It's really just a matter of opinion. You could probably do it any way you want. I drew the line in the wrong place. This is wet paint. That's why it looks like that. Um, I came up 39 and a half inches instead of 36 and a half because I looked at it wrong. This is the 36 inch line. And what we'll do is match this over here. So stone will come up to the top of the granite and then uh, this is the, roughly the same thickness as the granite. That'll represent the, height, the final height of the granite. And the other thing to consider, I didn't shoot a laser out here yet because it's easy enough just to measure up out here to get the height on this one. But once this one's done, what I'll do is bring the 360 laser out here so that I can shoot a laser line to get the finished height on this one and the finished height back there. This one is less important as that back there, and I'll tell you why in a minute, uh, but they're all gonna be slightly different heights in order to get them to look the same. So this one's independent, and so is that one. So they just need to be close. Over here, we've got like, this is 36 and a half. That I guarantee you is gonna be like 34 or something because of the slope. And that is, it has to be level over there. It has to be line up over there with the bottom of the granite. So what I'll do is uh, shoot the laser, is br bring a height up, mark it, and then shoot the laser to figure out how high it should be here. And then use the laser to figure out how high it should be there. And it is what it is, just as long as it's a straight line. Uh, so quite a bit of planning and um, just very, very time consuming. But uh, I think it's gonna look amazing. And uh, I sure hope that that paint dries the same color. <laughs> that was stupid that I drew that line too high, but in my experience, that paint is fine. You know, it matches very, very well. Uh, but uh, that was uh, last night's progress and it kind of kicked off the uh, getting all this stone done. So it gives me something to do while I'm waiting for granite. Well, first order of the day was to get these turkeys put together. These are two, uh, about 17 pounders in the Traeger, completely covered, five and a half hours. They came out amazing. Really, really good. Here's a uh, little close-up, a little TikTok uh, style turkey cooking. Anyway, uh, they're just stuffed with cornbread stuffing, uh, covered in a uh, just regular seasoning. And um, like I said, five hours at 350. And it came out really good. First year, in fact. Uh, look at that thing. Just work of art turkey. And uh, here's the fam. We had a really great Thanksgiving. And during the uh, turkey bake, I was able to finish up this column. And I will say that once you're, you know, about knee high, it is way easier to um, get this sucker together. Yeah, working from the ground up, I mean, I, you know, my fat butt has a hard time getting up and down like that. I cut all these stones with just a uh, regular uh, grinder wheel. And I actually bought a 10 inch diamond wheel for my miter saw. And that cut the 45s really, really well. Uh, in a future video, I will move the camera over and show you cutting the 45s for the top cap. Uh, but um, as far as cutting these, you know, you just, you, you cut them halfway break them and then you can kind of shape them with the saw. Uh, so I didn't show you any of that during this video, but next week's video I will bring the camera over there and show you a little bit more detail on how I cut these. I cut everything dry. Uh, it's just so much easier than dealing with a wet saw. And it's travertine, so like I said a number of times, it's super forgiving and uh, you don't you, you just really don't need to drag out a wet saw to do this. 
I'm using just a regular thin set from the tile store. It's whatever they recommended. It's a out a exterior, a very aggressive, you know, sticky. I don't know what word to use, uh, but you slap that stone on there and it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, dries overnight and it is rock hard. Um, I've used it before. Uh, if you use this product on the floor, uh, I guess you can see on the side of the bag there, number 437. Um, I think that's what that says. But uh, if you use this stuff on the floor, because we actually did and then chipped it up in the uh, kitchen video. Actually, here, I'll put the video right up here. This is a kitchen demo. Oh, my God, it was awful chipping the, chipping the stuff up. It is really, really sticky. Uh, but if you want something that's going to get rained on, if you want something to stay put that's going to get rained on and, you know, out in the weather, this is definitely the product. And it doesn't move around at all when you, uh, when you put it in place. You really do need to, um, you know, you can move it intentionally, but it doesn't, uh, you know, slide around. Uh, anyway, at this point, I'm kind of mixing up how I'm doing it. I end up working up this one side a little bit further rather than just continuously going around. I was really experimenting uh, to see if it mattered, which it didn't. And um, I just, you know, keep going. Just one, uh, one row at a time. So over here in this area, I was piecing together a bunch of little pieces and I probably didn't really need to do that because I have so much of the product that uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to run into a situation where I run out. But I had all these little pieces and I decided, you know, that it would make sense to try to piece them in. And again, I'm still kind of experimenting on how to get this stuff up. But um, but you can see here over here on the on the end there, I there may be an inch to three inch pieces. And that's the only way to get it when you when you have the end of one plank, I guess you could call it, and then you need to just finish it up till you get to the corner. And I didn't put a lot of thought into this. It doesn't really matter. The pattern, you can't see it when you're looking at the finished column. So if you use a little one inch piece, I guess if you used a whole bunch of them, that would be bad. Uh, but when you get around the edges, if you use these little one inch pieces, they just disappear. You can't even tell it looks like it was just, you know, designed that way. This, I think, is the very, very top piece. Pretty sure. And uh, I did not have to check for level through the entire project. Uh, if you noticed in the time lapse, I used the shovel to kind of crank up the area on the back side or, or the front, depending on what direction you're looking at it. But the part that's right over that deco drain, I just used a shovel and pried it up a little bit and stuck some screws under there, some uh, tap cons, to provide about an eighth of an inch of space between the deco drain and the uh, top of the ledger, and it or the bottom, I guess, of the ledger, and it worked out great. And I'll do that on the other column as well, and I'll also do that over on the cabinet by the side burner. Here's a better example of me piecing together these little pieces. And you'll see, once I get it up, it totally disappears. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, as I was mentioning, I didn't have to check for level. It pretty much stayed level enough where it doesn't even matter. You, you, uh, I put a level on it at the very end after everything was dry just to check because I had actually forgotten to really check for level during the, you know, when I'm laying this stuff. And it, it was fine. It didn't make any difference at all. Uh, stayed pretty much level all the way up. And here we are on the home stretch. I've got two more pieces, that one on the uh, back side, and then this one last piece on this side. It's always so gratifying when you get to the last piece, and it's just, it was truly astonishing to me how long this took uh, to get this one column done, but whatever. Uh, the next thing I do is turn my attention towards the cap that I chose for the top, and I showed you that before. Uh, what I've what I'm doing here is changing out my saw blade on my uh, miter saw right there on the left to a 10 inch diamond. Uh, again, I'm just going to dry cut this stuff. You know, in this case, a wet saw would have provided a cleaner edge, uh, but I don't have a wet saw and it worked out good enough. Uh, 
you have to be really slow and then you have to almost kind of sand it down with the saw blade i'll show you that in an upcoming episode i didn't move the camera for this episode but i like i mentioned i will show you uh, more detail of you know cutting this stuff uh, but two things you really got to consider one is your 45 edge and then the other one is your edges in between if you are unable to find uh, this style of stone that's long enough for what you need, which is this case. So I staggered the cuts uh, on the uh, face of the column and then the 45s, I just got them just as good as I can. And you'll see here at the end of the video, I do give you a close up and they came out pretty darn good. Uh, in this case, the thin set matches some of the stone, so it is a little forgiving. You know, it fills in little gaps here and there. And I could go back over it with a, a beige or a gray grout, uh, but I don't really think I need to. I think it's, it really did come out uh, pretty nice. There's a kind of a close up you can see right there. See, they, I mean, they touch. <laughs> and that's all that I was really mainly concerned of. I also, as I mentioned, I staggered these cuts and there's really hardly any waste. Uh, because the other pieces I can use in another area. Uh, what I did here was I cut the 45 first, uh, and then I kind of held it together and then marked the two straight cuts. And I think I got it right the first time. Uh, I may have had to just kind of trim up one side, but better a little too long than too short. And then uh, this is kind of a, a finished look. I'm pretty sure I have that other side to do. Yep, there we go. And again, same process, cut the 45 first after matching up the best color that's what i'm doing here is trying to find uh in fact i think during this little pause i went back out to the truck to find more i have three cases of this top stone and i am nitpicking to try to get the best possible match on this column because it is the column that you're going to look at every time you walk in and out in hindsight i probably shouldn't have chosen this column to do first <laughs> because the other ones are probably going to come out better the other one uh, but uh, same drill just uh, set it up, cut, got the 45 perfect, and then uh, drew the lines, cut the, um, cut the uh, straight lines, and, you know, it happened to fit just right. And you can wiggle these stones around a little bit. You see that little shadow there on the left. Uh, well, as soon as I pulled that out with my finger a little bit and then, uh, you know, filled it with thin set, it completely disappears. And then what I'm doing here is just really nitpicking uh, the thin set. If you don't wipe every little ooze that comes out, it looks like a bubble and you can't get it off with a screwdriver. This stuff is so hard you actually have to cut it off or cut it out with a, with a grinder. And then um, if the more time you take wiping it and making sure that everything looks natural and that there's no globs of thin set anywhere, uh, the less work you're gonna have to do later. So I you know, went around and around trying to check it and just make sure it was perfect. And even then I missed some spots, which I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, but, um, but for the most part, I got it. And you can wire brush what you miss. And that was it for Thanksgiving Day uh, stonework. Uh, I'm just cleaning up and the turkey is done. I already showed you a picture of it, but... Uh, we're having some people over, so I really, really wanted to finish this so that uh, the family that's coming over, my parents and my kids and their, you know, boyfriend, girlfriends, uh, they, uh, I really wanted to get their opinion of what they thought of it. And so I'm really glad that I was able to finish this before everyone came over for dinner. So I need to paint this, right? Get a nice line there. And then I need to come through and wire brush stuff like this. Like that is thin set and it shouldn't be there and I didn't wipe it off. Uh, but wire brush will just clean that right up. And I'll probably come back and just trim a couple of these. Let me find one that needs trimming. Well, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'll probably just knock this off real carefully with the wheel. Uh, but I wanted to give you a close-up of the seams. They're perfectly flat, but um, just really as good as I could get them because you've got four 45s and, you know, it is what it is. But I tried to match up the color as best I could. 
I think I did a pretty good job with that. And you can see here, I've got some mud that I'm just gonna, you know, a wire brush just does wonders on travertine. As far as the, what the finished look will be, let me show you this. Ah, here we go. So if you look at the wet area versus, let me try to get over here and maybe you can see a little better. Yeah, that's way better. So if you look at the wet area versus the dry, once it's sealed, it'll look like that. And the color will really come out nice. Um, I think that uh, it's just gonna look beautiful all the way around. Bella, what are you doing? Wanna come in? So the sealer will be a color enhancing sealer and that'll help help it match the outside. And it totally penetrates, it's like an oil. So it's, nothing's gonna flake off or anything. Sealing travertine is, especially here where it's not gonna get walked on or anything. It's just gonna be beautiful. Real quick, I'll just show you this again. This is what it looks like on the inside. I'll probably go through and reseal this this has been sealed. You can see it's got more color in it, but, uh, and then of course, here's the wall there with the fireplace. And then you just look right over and there you go. Same, same, same. And when you're standing over here, it'll look really nice because you'll see this and then you'll see both columns once that big old tile pile is gone. Pretty neat. <laughs> Smile. We're flying. It's not that one. It's actually, I can't see it. It is way over there, that one. You guys need anything out of these bags or are they good to go on the back? It's good to go on the back. Get <laughs> <laughs> your water. Get your water and your coffee. Thank you. Ooh, it's spacious. All right, that's all there is to it. Got a pretty big, pretty big plane actually right there. That right there, a little sucker. That's the plane we came in on, and and that's it. 50 minutes to the keys. So thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe. And until next week, I think uh, next week's episode eight. Hopefully, I'll get a lot done this uh, coming week.